on the other side of the sun. There revolves a planet similar to our own, except this is a world of paradoxes and backwards logic. This is a world of complete opposites. This is a world known as Earth 2. On Earth 2, every AA meeting has an open bar. Earth 2. On Earth 2, New Orleans was the only American city spared by Hurricane Katrina. Earth 2. On Earth 2, the Yankees live in the shadow of the mighty, mighty Mets. Earth 2. On Earth 2, rush hour is when you rush home from work on empty highways. Earth 2. On Earth 2, thin people bowl. Earth 2. On Earth 2, the second round is the easy round on Jeopardy. Earth 2. On Earth 2, Martin Luther King had a nightmare. Earth 2. On Earth 2, Chips was the greatest show in the history of television. Earth. On Earth 2, the cover of Sports Illustrated is a blessing. Earth 2. On Earth 2, donkeys do fly. Earth 2. On Earth 2, Earth 1 is Earth 2. Earth 2. On Earth 2, Chevy Chase is still a big star. On Earth 2. Why does Chevy Chase get your wrath? That's not, uh, that's not nice. All right, the Ron and Fez show. Good news for the Jets fans. He's back, ladies and gentlemen. Vinny Testaverde, 43 years old, is putting on his leather helmet and coming back to take the Jets to the Super Bowl. Someone woke up Rip Van Winkle and he's ready to play. Fez, you got them in two weeks, right? Bucks take them on this week. Fez has a bet that really does, uh, you know, it throws the money stuff away. You are offering, uh, you and Jay Dubs, our good buddy from Florida, he's a big Detroit Lions fan. If he loses, he gets a Tampa Bay Buccaneers tattoo on his ass. If you lose, Detroit Lions tattoo on your ass. Yeah, literally putting my ass on the line on this bet. That is true. So Tampa Bay Buccaneers, six and a half point favorites. This coming weekend in Tampa Bay against the Lions. Me and J-Dub's doing the governor's bet. Governor's bet. Straight up. I wish more governors would do this. Yeah. Get tattoos of other teams on their asses. Well, you know, this is not a bad deal for you because uh, the line is up um, six and a half. Yeah. In your way. By the way, I heard this from some other people, including Webby's sister, that want to join us at Hooters. Look how the bandwagon, the Buccaneer bandwagon, is now rolling. It's remarkable what 3-0 and do for your popularity. And now Hooters wants to uh, bring us some food by one day, right? Uh, Earl, have they said, look at Earl, he's <laughs> eating a salad. You're eating like a maniac, and Fez and I are over here starving like Ethiopian babies. I'm sorry. Look, even my stomach's extended. What? <laughs> yes, it is. That's as if the Ethiopian babies have a beer drinking problem. <laughs> like little pregnant four-year-olds over there. <laughs> Just sticks right out. I don't know what it is, but those, some of those little kids with those giant bellies are so adorable. Well, they have big eyes too. They have really large yeah. eyes, like anime kids. They're so <laughs> and nice skin. I guess it's uh, all of the impurities are out of their system. Yeah, once you scrape the flies off, there is a beautiful texture under there. You know, uh, Harry, you're a lucky, lucky man if this works out for you. So when is Hooters bringing food by? I hope in a half an hour. <laughs> Actually, we still got to work the details out, but the Hooters girls do want to <sighs> stop by. And, Let's uh, lock that up. Yeah, they want to talk about the new And they got to bring lots because we know what happens here. We have a lot yeah. of hungry men at this place. Oh, absolutely. We'll make sure that they... It's like dropping food into the uh, Superdome. <laughs> it's going to go quick into the strongest. Get it. It's a bag of Fritos. 
Make sure they bring lots of wings and a, hopefully a couple of burgers. Have too. them bring like wings and stuff and a lot of food while we discuss having them on. Right. Yeah, so make sure the food goes directly into the studio. Now, do we have to talk with Hooters Chicks? Yes, we do. I guess because we were talking about food, we got this uh, message sent to us. River, Riviera John. Wow, from the Riviera Deli. Which was the best food we've ever had on the air. Tastes great in your belly. Having uh, some uh, Fast Eddie sandwiches, which was the pinnacle of my career when Riviera Deli would bring food. Now, how can we do that well in St. Pete? And here we are in the middle of Midtown Manhattan, and you're looking at me in a blank space, Harry, like there's not food every which way, every direction. I'm just not a food connoisseur. I don't really know the I'm best places. I see you. I see you, man, titties. But you I do eat food. I don't There's eat a quality. Liberty Bell and an extra large shirt. I don't eat quality. I eat quantity. I just don't want to pube. Who else uh, was with Riviera John? Um, I don't. Hold on. Let me get the. You message. were the one who said you said he had somebody with him. That was uh, Bill, the intern. Well, you're the. Who's the producer? Who's the temporary producer? Who I heard from uh, Wiki goes. You can't have that fat Arab sleep here anymore. I I don't know if those were his exact words. Yeah, that was them. And it's not like you've been putting in extra time. You're just creeping out the building, people. I think Bruce, the office manager, complained. He says it's starting to stink like Arab in here. <laughs> Did someone pitch a tent? Nobody wants to see a terrorist 3 o'clock in the morning walking around the fucking <laughs> halls. It's scary. You're just weirding people out. You're creeping people out, kid. Uh, Bill's telling me the other name was Greg Billings. No way! From the Stranger Band and Damn the Tor Torpedoes. Formerly Stranger Band, now Damn the Torpedoes. Great group. XM should be playing them. A little national exposure. I always thought maybe the best front man I've ever seen in my life is. Greg Billings. It's just always a great time seeing that show. Yeah. I think he's going to be playing at the Daiquiri Deck on New Year's Eve. Are you busting balls? No, that's true. Uh, is that really true? Yeah, on Mad Beach. Because I never know with you. <laughs> That is absolutely true. How did you know this? Uh, BL <laughs> told me. When were you talking with BL? I'd like to get her on the show. Uh, BL was telling me I think they I think they do like regular appearances at the Daiquiri Deck. Mm -hmm. Her and the other sports chicks. And New Year's Eve is their big party there with Greg Billings. BL should be appearing at the Daiquiri Dick after what she's done with her life. <laughs> Frothy, just sloppy. <laughs> By the way, uh, BL, second Hooters girl fall, uh, ever hired. So you know how far back we're going with this one. It's before Bill the Intern was born. <laughs> Harry, can you get me a Fast Study sandwich? Oh, that would be so good. Can you make that happen for me? It's the world's largest, cheesiest sleeping pill. Mm. It's fantastic. It's every breakfast meat. It's eggs. It's cheese. Peppers, onions. Oh, all the good stuff. Although I'm going to tell you right now, my eyes are get so bad, I might have to lay off the onions. Is there any way you can find something like that? Is there a Riviera Deli around here? I will search to find a, uh, a really good deli around here. I don't know of one offhand. You're on 57th Street. They're not all that good. I mean, the one we, we went to was, you know, is on 57th Street. A lot of them are, are Where's just... Where's the funny? Where's the comedy? Where's the Mike 3 guy? Why, <laughs> why... Now, look. I didn't bust your balls. I'm asking a question, right? Yeah. How long do you think the comic would be on ONAs without getting his balls busted if he didn't go for funny? I'm just trying to figure out the food situation. But are you going for funny, too? Well, if it comes up, yeah. But, I mean, for, first and foremost, I'm trying so to get I'm the food. So I'm supposed to set... Fez, i got to set him up. Oh, okay. Lop the softballs out there, Rodney. Yeah. Uh, Harry, what do you think about pants? What's going on there? Like, let's say sweatpants. Good one. I know he's got a chunk on this. Well, the thing is, I lost a lot of weight, you know, and you can't... Mm -hmm. Like, you can... Well, you know, you can't wear certain clothes when you're big, like sweatpants. You can't? No, I can't, you know, because if you're thin and you wear sweatpants, it always looks like you're playing some kind of sport. Right. But if you're fat and you wear sweatpants, it just looks like you've given up on pants. So there you go. Why are you mad now? You you did it, right? You didn't like the way you did it? I, uh, that's, I don't know. I just didn't like the way it came out. Oh, you want to try it again? No. Uh, Harry, no. I noticed you're wearing sweatpants. No. How come? What's up with your pants? What's the story with your pants? Hey, you, pantsy. What's going on? Harry, I noticed... What the fuck? I noticed there's a lot of clothing stores around here. What are they selling? Pants? What would be good to wear with this shirt I got? 
some pants? Girl, uh, you know, women wear dresses, but men go in a whole different situation. Men will put on pants, ladies and gentlemen. See, there's funny in everything, Harry. Harry, look at my hand. I'm running an Irish afro here. I got to do something mm. about I look like fucking Dylan uh, when he went electric. It's just uh, I, I got to... Boo! You got something lined up for me? That'll be the new thing. I don't know any stylists. I'm not. A, I don't get. A, you know, look at my hair. It's not. Yeah, I know. There's a, you're you're the producer. There's a certain thing called the yellow pages. Where do you get your bald spot covered up at, Harry? Oh, I shouldn't have mentioned his hair. Why? Well, He's sensitive about that. I thought he had a chunk. Where's the bald spot? Let me see. It's Holy not really shit! It's a landing spot, pad. But, uh... It's a landing pad. How old do you have that? Twenty-two. You ought to get a fucking weave. Get it done now. Stitch that up. Looks like the San Andreas fault. What kind of fucking part <laughs> is that? It's just going back and forth like you could slalom down it. Did you watch the uh, Bob Dylan last night? No, I did not watch Bob Dylan. Part two. What is your anti-Bob Dylan thing? Uh, there was just other things on that I wanted to check out. What was that, on? That had a higher priority. Amazing Race, Family Edition. I'll never watch that show. Which is better than I gave it credit for yesterday. Because a woman got run over by an Amish buggy. And I hate those Amish. <laughs> they will run you down. And, and you know it was done on purpose. And the only reason her family was there is because they had just lost their husband and father who got ran over by a NASCAR. So Killed? Yeah. Wow. So he was working in the pits, went out to care, get off some de debris out of the track. I got run over by a car. How come we never heard about it? You thought that would have made the sports page. Yeah, or at least some footage of it. So then these children are in an Amish buggy that runs over their mother, and they're just sitting there horrified. Uh, Harry, let me see the uh, pad that you have in front of you. I'm just, I see you taking notes during the show, and I'm curious. Not to mention that there was a black family on Amazing Race whose last name was actually Black. So all through the show you had to keep hearing the black family is now in seventh place. Or the black family has been eliminated. I saw that. Their name was Johnson. There was no reason to call him that. <laughs> I blame the host. All right. So basically, he writes down uh, why I'm talking to him. Yellow Pages hairdresser. <laughs> so I won't forget because I forget. You'll forget what? On the sloppy pad. Look at the sloppy pad. It looks like your mind. Where do you get sloppy pads at? Let's see. J. Dubes, J. Dubes, sci-fi article. Have Fez read it. What sci-fi article do I have to read? There was a thing Ron sent that he wanted printed out uh, about the 50... Where is it? That was days ago. I had to have one of the... Inter... It's it's not all on one sheet is the problem. Okay. He forgot. <laughs> he I, didn't read his I own emailed that pad. to you when. It was like the 50 best sci-fi yeah. TV shows or something. Oh, cool. That went out on Monday. Monday. We're at the end of Wednesday's show. When did you think I wanted it for? I was trying to get someone to put them all down on one sheet. And you couldn't? I didn't get a chance to, no. Not that it's my job. I could do that in five minutes. What were you doing when you stayed up all night? I was cutting production. You were sleeping. Sleeping. And then also last night, I watched the brand new show, Commander-in-Chief, starring Gina Davis as our very tall first female president. Mm -hmm. How was that? Just a disaster. It's just all cliches, and it's everything bad. And it's like, you know, the president has a stroke. Our president, Theodore Roosevelt Bridges, has a stroke. That's supposed to be the guy's name. Really? Yeah. So he's on his deathbed asking her to resign. She decides not to. Then she d she uh, addresses Congress for the first time, uh, joint session of Congress as our new president. She doesn't. She barely even brings up the fact that the nation has just lost its leader. That's just an afterthought. That the president is now <laughs> dead thanks to a stroke, and the nation is in turmoil. She barely brings it up. And the Speaker of the House, who also wanted her to resign so he could become president, he turns the teleprompter off on her while she's making her address to the nation and the Congress. So it, what was his job? Speaker of the House. No, why would he think that he, if she messed up a speech, he would become president? He wanted her, when she wouldn't give up the White House to make him the new president, next what? in line, 
He's out to get her now. He's going to sabotage her pre her pregnancy, her presidency. <laughs> this has got to be the nuttiest show ever. It's just awful. And then they did like a, a dozen first husband jokes. And a lot of Hillary Clinton jokes. Just things shot at her. Like what? It was when she's taking the, the secretary's taking the... <laughs> you know, Hillary Clinton wears pants. She does wear a lot of pantsuits. Uh, give me another softball. I'll set you up in a minute, okay? As soon as he's done. So when she's the secretary's taking the first husband around, yeah, and she's like, "This is your office." Mrs. Clinton had her office in the West Wing. That didn't go over very well. And then everything that she showed the new first husband, mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton did it a different way. That didn't go over very well. No. Oh. So just like three or four Hillary Clinton jokes through this mess. I guess that's an easy laugh for you, huh? I guess. And then they would do the thing of, like, they can't explain. They have to try to explain government to you because mm -hmm. everyone's too dumb. And the new president, she goes, I want to see the chairman. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs? Yes, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. And she threatened to attack Nigeria to prove that she's a tough president. Nigeria? Yeah, she was going into Nigeria. She had a battle plan all set up and the generals behind her. Did she, uh, is she starting to work on this homeless problem, Fez? <laughs> if you notice, there's a homeless problem in the country, right, Harry? Well, I, I don't understand the lack of compassion for the homeless that people have. You know, people like, oh, he's lazy. Like, really? Do you think it's lack of ambition that keeps the guy homeless? Like, he gets up every day and goes, oh, I got that job interview at noon. But uh, I also want to stay here and shit myself. Not enough hours in the day. Um. Yeah, so that's another thing that they uh, could be doing. They could. Oh, well, you know what happens on next week's episode? What? The first daughter, who, oh, by the way, is a right-wing Republican and thinks her mother should have resigned the post. <laughs> so there's a little a girl, Alex Keaton, in all this. And on next week's episode, uh, the girl loses her diary. And there's really awful things about the new president written in there. Because she doesn't agree with her mother on any political thing. So, uh... So now it's turned into a Marsha Brady episode. Right. We have to worry about... Like, the daughter wouldn't have bad things written about her father if he was president. Right. So this has got to be, uh... This show you think it's not going to make it, huh? There is no way this thing is making it. It's no. not happening. She how... will be impeached by the American public. <laughs> how long do you give it, Fez? I will give it... Four more episodes. It'll get a five-episode run. This thing could be better, uh, could be replaced with a show about a dentist. Yeah, they could do an episode about uh, why you only have two forms of Novocaine. You either get the, the laughing gas or the needle, which is great. You can have this, this hallucinogenic gas, which makes the world fun, or I could stab you in the face five times. Well, I don't think that the uh, gas is uh, Novocaine. Well, it helps numb the, it helps get, you know, numb the pain. Hmm. It's more like when they're putting you out for oral surgery. Right. Novocaine's when they're actually just working in a spot. Here's, uh, did you just burn? I was, no, I was going to say something. Then I said, why bother? Why bother? What? What were you going to say? I was going to say that. I, I know people, it's not just oral surgery. A lot of people have it for just smaller procedures. They get the, the gas. Yeah, but you still get Novocaine, too. Yeah, you get both. If they're working the, on you. The gas more or less uh, stops you from feeling uh, trapped in the chair or whatever. It's the supposedly chill people out but you wouldn't just get gas and then just start drilling into your tooth because you can still feel pain there um here's uh alan alan you're on run a fez hey what's up guys hey well, alan. I, uh, i'm just uh, listening to you guys there and i'm enjoying it a little bit but man i'm a uh, fez you must be uh got eyes everywhere in that because both those shows you've been talking about well at the same time right? that great race and then this president one what's going on how you guys? doing this fez through the magic of TiVo. <laughs> I started recording Amazing Race at 9 o'clock, went in the bedroom, watched uh, Commander-in-Chief, then came out and started watching Amazing Race an hour after it started. Yeah, who needs women? You're living <laughs> a whole life on your own. I'm on top of it. Yeah. And just a trail of Chinese food from one room to the next. Hey, uh, what's on tonight? <laughs> tonight we got lost on our TiVo alert. Uh-oh, what time's that come on? That is going to be on the... They're going to reshow last week's episode at 8... Then a new episode comes on at 9. Mm -hmm. 
And then after that is Invasion. That's another new ABC show that will not make it. It's kind of the lost ripoff, like, oh, let's have a crazy lost show. Yeah. And Martha Stewart's Apprentice is on at 8 o'clock tonight. I already think I'm done with both the, the Apprentices. What I might do is wait till the end and watch that last uh, episode. I mean, forget about it. I'd rather be into religion right now, Fez. Religion? Well, yeah, you know, there's you got Jews and Christians who are pretty much both the same when it comes to the Old Testament. I like the idea that they're very similar on that. Like, no, we believe the crazy story about Moses and the Red Sea. We believe the crazy story about Noah and the Ark. But the New Testament is like, oh, wait, he turns what into wine? All right, that's, I'm calling shenanigans. That's bullshit. The, uh, the thing, too, that's happening. Hmm. Uh, what is wrong, Harry? Nothing. What do you want me to do? Should I, uh, should I fake left? No. Tell me what to do, and then I'll know. I don't always know how to do it when you got your material. Give me another one. I'm going to do better. No, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. I'm out of material. No, I'm going to do better. You can't be. You're going to need more for the comedy challenge <laughs> against Nathaniel. Nathaniel better yeah, is better be uh, on his game because I'm hearing some stuff tonight, <laughs> like with that homeless shitting themselves and uh, uh, the Jews don't believe Jesus. There's some things happen. I hope Nathaniel doesn't walk in there doing a bit on pants. Because we're going to know where he got it from. Don't step on my material, Nathaniel. Hey, Dental Dan, you're on Runner Fez. Hey, guys. Uh, of course, the name, I'm a dentist. Harry needs to revamp his jokes. There's also uh, cautious sedation that a lot of dentists are using now, too. So he needs to really research his jokes if he's going to be an outstanding comedian. Later, gentlemen. I'll see you later. What do you say to the American Dental Association? What do you do when, when you get a heckler like that? <laughs> Knowledgeable heckler. <laughs> and a dentist gown. I, I don't come to where you work and try to stop you from doing a root canal. Is that one of the gimmicks? <laughs> I don't kick the drill out of your hand. What do, what do you say to him, Harry? Harry? I, I don't know. I'd probably improv it. I'd just deal with it. Well, this is where you are now. <laughs> this is where you improv. Improving will be good at this moment. Now, when Bill Berg is on uh, ONA, is he doing his material, or is he... Uh... He's just riffing. Oh, yeah. He's very funny either way. Oh, try some of that. Yeah. Try some of that riffing I've heard so much. <laughs> oh, hold on, this just then. <laughs> Fan me up, you some flounder. <laughs> Masterpoeisback.com. Oh, wait, it's on the other side of that. Oh. Hold on. I don't know, Fuzzy, any sports on tonight? Like, I wouldn't mind watching some boxing. You know what I like about boxing? It's What's uh, that, there's Harry? a lot of I've noticed there's a lot of blacks and Hispanics in boxing, and that's because boxing really is a poor man's sport when you when you think of it. You know, you know how poor you have to be where the only way you can make a living is to get punched in the face. That wasn't me. That was Earl. Yeah. That was the uh, other black right. person. <laughs> that's true. It is the poor man's sport. At one time, the Irish did it. Uh, then the Italians. And who's ever kind of uh, on the bottom there? Yeah, it always goes lower and lower. I'm trying to figure out who the next. Maybe the Arabs will be next. Mm-hmm. It could be. We'll see. Uh, Dan, Dan, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Dan. Hey, guys. Love the show. Thank you so much. Just want to say, apparently he needs slow pitch softball. None of this fast pitch softball. Anymore. Am I coming in too just, quick? You're like the Olympic just, team. I'm going to be ready. Or a for tea. Maybe a T or something. I don't know. This is just. It's a disaster. No, I mean, we're doing the third mic. Uh, Fezzy and I always want somebody on third mic ready to chuck some things in. and I, It's been slaying for O&A. Uh, and uh, let's, uh, now we got Harry. Here's our third mic. Look who's on Fox News right now. Look at that lunatic blonde. Uh, what is her name? Ann, Ann Coulter. Coulter. Ann Coulter. She's a, a complete psycho. And yet look at her. Even though she's not the prettiest girl, and you'd still bang her because she's crazy. Now, we haven't heard any of the sound of this, but when they go to the anchors, look how sad everyone is when they talk about Tom DeLay. <laughs> everyone is just moping around right. Fox News. They act like he passed away earlier today. <laughs> right, Harry? What do you think about Aunt Coulter? Harry? Mike 3? Harry, you're on. She's wearing pants and boxing. <laughs> She's wearing boxing pants. Uh, hey, Scott. Scott, you're on Run of Fez. Yeah, I just want to know, like, what your point is about the whole homeless thing. Harry? Like, yeah. I'm just saying, when you say uh, not 
uh, homeless people are just lazy. You know, that's not that's not the grand, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, who who's going to be against homeless people? Do you know any homeless people? I mean, I, mean, I see homeless people Newark, every you're day. In Newark and seeing people. I've gone through Newark. Yeah. Wiki accused you of being okay, one today. So when you see people that lie to their wives over and over again, or vice versa, and they won't listen, and they won't do anything responsible, and then they get kicked out of their own house, you want basically the government to take more tax money from regular hardworking Americans and somehow do what for homeless people? Uh, do what? I, I mean, didn't have a whole salute. It's just a stupid homeless joke. Well, All right? There's no, there's no fucking thought if behind it. Joke, there's nothing brilliant. There's no joke. fucking brilliance behind it. It's just a dumb little joke. Are you heckling right? yourself? Here's, here's a little hit, then. Here's a little, here's Me a little suck. Hit for you. Be funny. If you got something to say, be funny if it's going to be a joke. I liked when you started breaking down and yelling. Of at course you do. That's, that's the, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? You almost got balls. What happened? No, nothing. What happened? Maybe nothing, let nothing. him drop back down. Of course nothing. I do. What? That's what, I mean, that's the whole point of it. It's the whole point. It's not for me to be funny. It's for me to just break down. So I'm holding you back? No, it's not that. It's, it's... Nothing. What is it, Harry? No, it's not. Are you are you mad at me for giving you your first job where you're making money? I'm not. No, I'm not, not mad at me. I'm I'm mad at me. No, I this can't is me. Perform. I'm some kind of I, awful person. No, it's not you. Your first you. It's me. It's I just, feel I, terrible right now. Well, don't forget the benefits too. Mm. It's for some reason I I can do it on stage. I just can't do it here. I don't know why. I just don't know why. And I'm trying to. I maybe I really you do better when you're working free. Maybe that's where you shine. Maybe we stop the paycheck. Things will start to go your way. You start to turn it around. That eye of the tiger. When you're hungry. Maybe we'll do this show at 2 a.m., have three people here, and you'll go out and sell the hell out of it. Uh, Seth, you're running Fez. Hey, boy. How are you? Good to have you Hey, buddy. Back. Um, I just want to say, Harry, I give you a lot of credit for uh, trying to do your do your routine over there, but uh, the uh, boxing bit is straight out of Chris Rock's repertoire. Uh, he said, "The further you go down in the socioeconomic ladder, the better boxer you are." Probably is that the bit I did? Well, I'm pretty or... close to it. I'm not knocking you. I'm just saying, just like before, do a little more research, maybe. Everybody but, wants uh, me to do research for the jokes. Not the like research. I'm writing a maybe term just paper. Be a little more aware of what's going on in pop culture, especially one of the most prominent comedians in the country right now. Hmm. Uh, but uh, anyway, good luck. See you. Hey, uh, Bill. Bill, you're on run of us. He's saying, "Take from the less popular." Hi, Bill. Hey, I I think we got a translation problem with Harry's jokes. Maybe they'd be funny in her in his uh, native Arabic. Huh? Not an Arab. All right, let me do this. Let me take a break. We'll come back and you have some stuff ready to go. And I'll I'll be out of the room. What's that? I really I that's I don't see how that would be any better. I don't see how I'm I'm just I'm not good on this. On what? It's not going to be any much be any better for me to do it. You're refusing to do your job? No, I just, I don't, I'm, the jokes, it's not going to be better for me to tell jokes on air. It's just not, I don't know why I can't, I just can't do it. I'm just, it doesn't, it doesn't work out well. I don't know why. Hmm. What are you saying, Earl? No, I'm just trying to cheer him on. I'm like, come on, Harry. Thank you for cheering me on by playing sound effects. <laughs> I'm feeling nervous for my hair in this comedy challenge. <laughs> no, you know what, Fez? This is not his uh, venue. He doesn't do well here under a, what I call a paid situation. It's that Monday night open mic night that he does well. A microphone's a microphone. Hey, uh, Steve. Steve, you're on run of Fez. Hey, Ron, I wanted to know. I wake up in uh, somewhere in 2002 and a Harry Rant is on NEW. <laughs> Is the same hack material he was using back then. Hmm. Huh? Those are just the ones I uh, I remembered off the top of my head. You have that book, that comedy uh, notebook of, of greatness? No, nah, not on me. Do you would you do this better if we went down in your mom's cellar where you have the, all those uh, pictures of an audience laughing real hard? The cutouts. Ma! What's wrong, Harry? Nothing. All right, here's your buddy, Ass Man. He'll help out. Ass Man, you're on the air. Thank goodness. 
Good afternoon, boys. Hey, buddy. Hi, ass really? man. You know what? It, it, Harry's just not coming across as funny. I mean, I never thought I'd live to see the day I would actually be saying this on air, but bring back Al Dukes. At least he pissed his fucking pants and made us laugh, okay? At least he kissed another guy and made us laugh. At, le at, le at least he had arguments with Billy and made us laugh. Right. This guy is not funny. He's horrible. I don't know what it is. He's just not funny. Do you think Rain it's something funny. that you'll grow to love? I don't know. I, maybe, is it, you know... But you, know, you like him. Of... You've met Harry. You like him as a person. You know he's a clever guy. Uh, I don't know. I mean, What's he doing wrong, ass man? He's just, he's just not delivering. He's not coming through with, with, with his lines. He's, he doesn't believe he's funny. He's just not funny. He doesn't come off as funny. Yeah, what do you think, uh, Harry? Uh, yeah. Is it yeah, a struggle not... for you to be in here? I just get very nervous in here. I don't know what it is. You know, on stage it's just no. It's the salary. Is that the problem? We provided a former 510-pound motivational <laughs> speaker. He's down. He says 250. <laughs> I think he's less. A motivational coach. Tom, you're on running Fez. Hey, I just wanted to say I've heard his stuff before and I loved it the first time on XM 150, the Comedy Channel. Oh, Jesus. I'm that... willing to put my hair up on the line. You could shave it off when he loses. All right, you're in, Tom. Okay, thanks, man. Man, there's going to be a lot of bald-headed people walking around the country. Is that where you're getting the material from, 150? No, although it is a good channel. Have you been on there yet? No. No to Sunny Fox. No, not, not with this, not, not with today's CD. What's wrong? Not with this demo. What's wrong? <laughs> Send this to Sunny Fox and see if he'll play this. Hey, Joe. Joe, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Harry just needs to, like, chill out. Tell everybody to fuck off, basically. Just relax. And just be himself. And if he be himself, he could probably relax and have a good time. Now, I don't and know if Joe's lost as much weight as the ass man, but he's making sense, too. <laughs> what do you think of that one? Give me another softball. I'll set you up. Set it up with the new attitude where you're telling people to fuck off. <laughs> you can tell Ron and Fez just to fuck off, and then that'll make you feel better. Right. But, you know, that's... All right, I like the idea of that. That in-your-face. Yeah, you're that in-your-face comic. We're just a bunch of hockey pucks. Stupid hockey pucks. You want to watch out for Harry and Sanian. You don't want to be in the front row of that show. I'm not sure what this uh, word is. I think it's high panic. No, it's uh, Hispanic. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You know, uh, you're Hispanic. Yeah, you? most people uh, don't know that. Yeah, I'm actually both. Hispanic. Yeah. But I don't really look Hispanic, which is uh, great because during the Puerto Rican Day Parade, I can do all the groping I want. And then when the cops show up, all I have to do is grab the guy next to me. I got him right here, officer. So, um... Fuck off. Earl, if you do that, he can't get to the punchline. So oh, no, you... it was there. It what? was there. I know oh. it may not seem like it. What was the punchline? But it was Ouch. there. I right, do it again. What was the punchline? Uh, I don't even. Know. I thought that was the punchline. It was. It was the punchline. Which part was? I wish someone would come in here and punch me. Why are you saying that? And then, I'm uh, trying to really. Who, a homeless boxer? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to set you up. Who just went to the dentist? <laughs> Barry, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, man, I cannot. Dude, if this guy ever comes, Harvey, you ever come to Alabama? Harry. I'm gonna, and I will never go to Alabama. Right, listen, why? One, man, a lot of clubs I, there. You know why? Because we're better than this fucking idiot is, man. I don't care if you ever come down or not, Harvey. I'm going to punch you in your fucking throat. You can't do it because you're not funny, man. You well, are you saying you wouldn't take a gig in Alabama? Uh, you wouldn't play Birmingham? No, I might. Mobile? I might. I just... why, why, how are you a comic if you've never been on the road? you never toured? I've done some road stuff. Where? Just uh, different clubs in, like, uh, Florida. Like, a couple of places down there when I was uh, down there. Open mic? Um, no, it, was, it wasn't it was an open mic. I played Uncle Funny's a little bit, but it wasn't an open mic thing. You got paid? Uncle Funny paid you? Yeah, we got a, a small amount, nothing big. I got, like, ten bucks for the spot. When anything major. Uncle Funny's pays, like, four or five grand for the weekend. Yeah, How'd I wasn't you... headlining. I got a, like a... Ten bucks is one guy paid you out of the entire place. One head paid you. That's a drink and one cheese dick. 
So you are a road comic. No, you really. got ten bucks thrown to you at Uncle Funny's. Oh yeah, I got the tour shirt. That was fucking <laughs> great tour. What's wrong, Harry? Now you're mad at me? Nah. Mad at Uncle Funny? <laughs> Let's take a uh, break. We're right back with more of the comedy stylings Woo! of Harry T. Make them laugh, make them laugh. Don't you know everyone wants to laugh? <laughs> My dad said be when you hear that, it could only be one thing. Here comes Might Harry T. Earl, you're an ass, man. Ready to make things happy. I love how he just sits there and says, no, be, do, you can do better. And then he just... Cuts me down each step of the way with uh, his music and drops. I, until Earl fucks up something, he's got every right. Man. I know. <laughs> oh, and my day's coming. I know that. Earl's MVP. I can't believe uh, Harry acts like he never met you and I. Or was on the phone begging to work this fucking job. And then when he comes in here, sad sex. I'm Fez. This is my friend Ron. It's very nice to meet you. All right, people are out there. You got fans. Here's uh, Tim. <laughs> Tim, you're on running fans. Tim A. Hey, Harry, Harry Balls. Hey, Harry. Very clever. Very creative. Dude, Harry, Harry. It's the first I totally Fez. support you. You need to step up like Tom Brady, kind of do a little sidestep when, when the Ron and Fez pressure is on. You're, you're doing fine. Just plow through. Maybe it's the five whys that I'm trying to support here in Utah. Maybe that's wearing me out. But I think you're funny. I think you need to plow through, buddy. Plow through. There you go. All right. First positive one. I appreciate that. People sir. are uh, pulling for you. You think that old man Vinny Testaverde sitting around going, oh, I can't do this, Jets. I can't oh, do this, Coach shucks. Edwards. One of the first things you could do, Harry, is keep your head up. Your chin is on the floor the whole time you're in here. Here's uh, Harry. Harry, you're on with Harry. This Harry? Yes. Well, I'd like to offer my support as a fellow person named Harry. <laughs> nice. I, that's nice. Well, I too am against homeless people. <laughs> no, you. I Let think it's totally. Let him go. I think he's no, killing. I think he totally. Let him go. Pick up and, his. I like his delivery. And I, and like I said, I'm against the homeless homeless people like your Harry there. Yeah. And when I see homeless people in sweatpants, <laughs> I'm absolutely livid. See? Absolutely livid. The All you Harrys are alike. They need dental care. They so. they need to get smashed with a bat. All right, thank you. This is starting to work. Thank you, or two, Harry. Here's Matt. Welcome, Matt, to the Ron Fez Show. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah. Glad to hear you back on the radio. Thank you. Somebody should volunteer to run him over with a bus. All he right. sucks. I hope Nathaniel fucking kills him. I don't think Nathaniel stands a chance right now. How many of those guys are putting their hair on the line? Who's all up for this? Nathaniel, uh, Danny, and Eric. Danny, come I on believe. in here. And uh, I noticed Danny scouting a little bit. And I'll say this. I think he's looking pale. I think he's looking a little nervous right now when he's hearing some of the A material. Hello, Mr. Nerves. Hello. <laughs> how, how are you feeling overall when you sit, when you hear what's happening? Oh Well, Harry, I mean, Harry's funny to me. Right. Because yeah, I but see not all the things the... behind the scenes here that goes on, and that Ooh. makes me laugh. But when he's on the air, yeah. uh, I'm just laughing at the wreck that's, going, that's taking right. place. It's not really the material that's I, making me laugh. What happens off the air when I, I get approached today by Don Wiki Wickland to say, Harry can't live here. Harry must <sighs> not yeah, stop sleeping here. That's something that I find amusing when I come in after eight hours of sleep, <laughs> six in the morning, and there's Harry on his laptop. Yeah, still, hilarious. Still trying to piece together a 25-second piece of production. Not 25 seconds. That makes me laugh. Wiki said, I love the Arab kid, but this can't be midnight at the Oasis. So a lot of this stuff he should be banging out quickly. Well, I mean, it's not like I haven't offered my help or anything, right. you know. Why don't you throw it to him? What are you worried about? I now? will. I will. It's just sometimes I don't realize I need his help until it's too late and I'm doing it kind of. Until it's 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Do we need to either uh, get a shower in here or pick up the pace somehow? I mean, I'm still I'm working on it. it now, uh, let me check with anymore. Danny. Harry gave himself a C. As our producer, where what letter grade would you give him? Ah, uh, boy, you're you're somewhere hovering around the uh, the D minus area. Uh, wow, this is like Brownie, the former FEMA guy, <laughs> <laughs> appearing in front of Congress, and that one congressman just screamed, "I give you an F minus." <laughs> All right, here's uh, here's the guy you're taking on, it's Nathaniel. Hey, Nathaniel, how you doing, buddy? 
pretty good. I hear there's some uh, Harry trying to throw it out in gobble again. Yeah, Harry is uh, came in here doing some of his ace material. Uh, I'll just warn you this. You better have some pants material in that, Daniel, if you're ready for Harry. Because he owns most of the garment working audience. You'll be going leg to leg. Fair enough. Have you guys gotten any closer to setting up a date or where this is going to take place? Or? I'm working on getting a club. I have to see someone tonight about the location. and I've uh, talked to Ben about getting some judges. Uh, give uh, give us an idea where we're talking about. Well, I don't want to reveal it. One of the big ones, though? Yeah, one of the bigger ones in New York. One of the ones everybody knows? Pretty much. One You've of the all major... seen it on TV? What area of town? Um, I don't want to say. I don't want to reveal it yet. Well, it's area of town wouldn't uh, hurt. Well, it's on on uh, I'd say uh, on the west side. Ah, Upper West Side. Mm, maybe. Oh, jeez. Maybe. We're going places then. Are you ready for this, Nathaniel? Now, is, have we decided to open this up to the public, or you still want to do? I still want it to be fair. I feel like if I open it to the public, I, I it will be too biased. But who's gonna laugh if there's not an audience? Well, we're gonna have an audience, but they just other won't comics. be. Harry's used to working other comics. Yeah, that's the best kind of comedy too. I've got 25 minutes just to make uh, open micers laugh, so it should be great. Ouch. Yeah, Fez, I'm doing well. Fez, you still feel good about putting your hair on the line for this? My hair is on the line against Harry T. Yeah. With Harry T, I mean. And Earl is back in Harry. Earl is actually putting his hair on the line, too. What? what huh? Earl will <laughs> shave bald if Harry loses this. But I, I'll, Harry, cu I'll cut it. Is Harry hair. still refusing to uh, save Fez's eyebrows, or...? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Everyone's disgusted about that. Uh, Harry, if he puts his eyebrows on, he could probably win Fez's love back. By I don't say, think that'll ever happen. I think Fez really doesn't. You don't know how boundless my love is. Yeah, you don't know. It's like trying to guess God's love. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, you're welcome, Fez. That's a female Greek god, <laughs> Aphrodite. All right, Nathaniel. I can't wait to to hear when you guys set this up. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm worried for for Fezzi, unfortunately. Yeah, well, you know what? Don't pull back, Fezzi. Whatever happens, happens. Now, I'm a big girl. I know what I'm getting into. We're gonna have celebrity comedy judges. Yeah, we're working. Um, Ben's gonna help me out with that as yeah. far as because he has the major connections. Anything you ever do on your own after your four and a half years of comedy? You think you know some comics? I know some comics, but I, I really want some major. Who, who's the biggest name comic that you're friends with? Uh, I'm friends with Dean Obidala, who's a big, uh, a big comic in New York. He's very funny. Um, Gino Bisconti, who plays in New York as well. Mm -hmm. now, um, you know anyone not named after an Italian cookie? <laughs> I'm starving <laughs> after hearing this. Seriously, I am so hungry. You think you would know some places to eat? I just want something to dip in my <laughs> coffee at this point. Come on, the cookie joke was funny. Give it, it to me. It was very funny. All right, Nathaniel, funny. we'll talk to you soon because we got to get going here. All uh, right, thanks, man. Thanks, thanks man. Bye. Danny, when Harry was, before we got here to XM, and Harry was an ONA intern, was he like this? Uh, Pretty much. Oh, he pretty was, much. huh? Yeah, the whole pacing back and forth, kind of aimlessly thing. Uh, you know, he was here for, I think, two and a half months and was still asking how to print out the feedback. So... Yeah, pretty much of the same That's, here. Oh, God. Pretty much of the same thing here. Oh, Just God. Kinda... How awkward. Ooh. Boy, did Opie stick us with him. Oh, got us good. He got us twice. Oh, man. Earl and Harry both. Yep. Earl and Harry. And Earl has shocked the world by uh, turning it around. Earl might be uh, looking at uh, Producer of the Year honors with XM. I was talking with some of the people. Over 200 channels? That yeah. he's producer Over 200 of the year? channels. It's going to be between him and the NASCAR guy, Ogre. But uh, <laughs> Ogre quit the other day. He did? You didn't get that email? Oh, I, you know, I saw it was from Ogre, but it was so rambling I didn't read it. Well, at, at the <laughs> bottom he left and is doing very well with his uh, barbecue business. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. His uh, choice, sure. Hey, uh, Petri <laughs> Dish, you're on Running Fez. Hey, buddy. How y'all yeah. doing? This guy, Harry, is horrible. I want to take a piece of glass and put it in the hole of my dick and smash it with a hammer. That's Gallagher's horrible. bit. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of funny. That was a comeback, right? Yeah, that was very... One. I'll mark that down. Uh, Matt, you're running Put that on the reel I sent to Sonny Fox. Fellas? Yeah. Hey, hello. Yeah. Go ahead, Matt. Doing? Hey, listen, I do a little bit of stand-up comedy myself. I got some advice for him, man. Yeah. He needs to sell caskets, bro. 
really. <laughs> now, where do you do comedy at? Well, I do amateur. I uh, do stand up here. Some uh, some of the nightclubs I started in Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm in San Angelo, Texas right now. It's a small enough town. There's not really any type of a venue for it, but you know, every once in a while I get my foot in the door somewhere and, and do a little bit of stand up. But I've, I've kind of been in the same boat as he is, and really, I think he can get past it. I think his big problem is the lack of confidence. You think that's it for you, uh, Harry? Other comics are calling in to. I don't have. I don't like it on stage. Like, like mourners, they're calling in for some reason. You I hate don't know me why. and Fez. No, I. I really. It's the. It's the opposite of that. I really admire you guys, and that's why it's very. I get very nervous because mm -hmm. I can't keep up. Would it be better for us to leave when you come into the studio? No, I don't. And then think... you'll have third mic to yourself. <laughs> See, I think that defeats the third mic purpose. I'm supposed to help out, but. Mm. You can talk to yourself. Well, then you just let us know when you're done, and we'll run back in. I think that would throw off the timing of the show. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Good point, Harry. Uh, Dennis, you're Ronnie Fez. Roddy Fez. Yeah. Two two zero seven six one. That's old school, Harry. Hoo ah. Fezzy. Yeah, I buddy. I see the future. You with a bald head and a Detroit Lions tattoo <laughs> on your ass. On your Ow. stupid fat ass. That's the only way you'll be able to tell my ass from my head. <laughs> the ass has the Lions tattoo. Are uh, we getting this done on the air? Your tattoo. Yeah, we'll do it right in here. Mm, bare ass, I'm going to invite all the Not people in. Oh, bare ass, we'll need one of those surgical screens put up. <laughs> like, I, from MASH? I know where we're, what the O in Lions is going to be, too. <laughs> all I need is the L, the I, the N, and the S. You know what? I, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I cannot believe that you put your body on the line for a bet. I would much rather put $10,000 up than ink under my skin. I don't know what it is about a tattoo that just grosses me out. It seems like... I would always feel dirty. My big fear about this, if I lose and I'm getting this tattoo, I'm always afraid they're going to hit, like, some sort of artery with that needle. And then, yeah. you know, like all the predictions, Fez bleeds to death out his ass. <laughs> Who was predicting that? Uh, I did. I've got a bet on that. I've got it in my high school yearbook. <laughs> Most likely to die from bleeding from his ass. Yeah, right next to my picture in the Spanish club. Yeah. Actually, it'll be your eyes, your nose, ears, and ass. I'll bleed. It, that's called a bleed out, and it's what happens when it, it really grabs you bad. Harry, I'm pulling for you now, and I'm starting to feel like you've hit bottom, and you're starting to push off. What what I didn't know was that, let, let me just check with Danny. Do any of the ONA guys respect Harry? And nah, I want this nah. is complete shoot, total truth. Nah. Were you all shocked when he got the gig? Yeah. 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 Because Maybe Bill, though. I mean, <clears throat> Bill, what do you think? Did you think you like, you like Harry T? You got respect for Harry T? Be honest, Bill. Because Don't worry he's about the, it. be honest. Just be honest. Honestly, uh, I like Harry. He's okay and stuff. And I'm not just trying to be uh, like nice to everyone, you know. Yeah. But uh, he's, he seems like he's nervous a lot and uh, kind of so much pressure on him. And uh, I don't know if he was prepared for being the assistant producer under you guys. Right. So, but. Uh, at least and I know he's trying and he's working hard. All right, that's nice. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. He's trying. He's not up to it. That's the. <laughs> Why can't we just leave it at the trying part? Well, we he said you like... didn't have the skills to pull it just off. Just say, just say, trying. <laughs> dot dot dot. And everybody says you're nervous and you feel pressure. Yeah. Were you nervous, <laughs> nervous yeah. around your internship? Mm, not so much nervous. I just. Didn't feel like you're part of the gang? No, I was never part of the gang. Oh, he's looking in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I remember at the prom when they put goat's blood on you? <laughs> remember? Because you had your period. Remember how bad you felt then? Cramps. I had cramps. All right. Well, you didn't tell us that you couldn't do this when you got called in for the interview. Well, with no, I thought I, thought I would be able to. Speak to. Up. I thought I would be able to. Oh, and by the way, I have no ability to do this. That's not. It's not that I have no ability to do this. I would this. definitely say. I always tell people all the time when they'll go, uh, hey, here's, an, here's a business opportunity. And I go like this. I know me and Fez, and we're really lazy. And three to four hours a day is as hard as we're going to work on but anything. It's I not, constantly say that. That's, no, that's not going to happen with me. I'm no. not lazy. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I mean, I was here all night yesterday, you know, trying to get all the, the promo stuff done. All the, uh, why laugh, Danny? Because done. there's no reason well, for it. Because there's a difference between being somewhere all night and actually getting something done during that time. Right. So. 
So you're not actually working. Being somewhere, that's like me going, hey, I was in the hotel for three days. Don't tell me I'm not trying. You but know, I'm I was, TV. I, I'm not, I wasn't sitting around here watching TV. I would rather be at home than sit if I'm going to do that. But he's saying it's not the person who racks up the most hours. I'm not saying producer. it is, but I, again, I'm not, you know, it's not like I'm. It's the funniest. When you've been here the longest, you're the funniest. It's not like I'm just, uh, you know, like at three, at two o'clock when the show's done, I just chuck everything and go. Well, you did yesterday. I had to. What go are you to doing today? Class. <laughs> but I mean, aside from that. Is it producing class? No. All I see is the back of a large bicycle helmet at two o'clock in the east. <laughs> All right, you got to leave after the show today. Uh, eventually, yeah. Well, eventually, sure. After what Wiki told you. Eventually. That sounds like you're leaving in pieces. No, I will <laughs> like be. Like you're dripping out of I here. I will be. All right, give us a joke to go. Come on, Harry. Um, you give me the softball set. You want me to hit one out? Give me one to take home. Your best Tell my chunk. Neighbors. You're leaving, bit. Uh, this is how you leave it. Um, um, okay, uh, relationships. All right, hold on. Hey, Fez, I forgot to tell you. I'm finding myself in a relationship lately. Wow. You ever listen to a, a girl describe the new guy she's dating with who's clearly yes. bad for her? Yes. Just like, oh, his name is Ice Pick. He just got out of the joint. He's trying to turn his life around. And he's really sweet because I locked myself out of the apartment and he, just, he knew just how to get in. Ice Pick. He's no good for you, girl. <laughs> I would call the police. You were late on that, Earl. Late. Harry, how do those balls taste? Oh! What does that even mean? Oh! Now that's what does that I even mean? Home. What the oh, fuck does that even we mean? Can't. You just ate your balls for three hours. I'm we, just curious on how it tastes. We can't top that one. We'll be back here tomorrow. I gotta tell that one to the retards at home. How they doing? Nuts. Mm. Just nuts. Talk about eating your balls. Alright, take care everybody. Don't put up with anybody's bullshit. Two.